someone treats you unfairly or try looking at the situation from a different perspective. You never know what is going on in his life. Some person have a lot of difficulties in their personal life and they are struggling and they bring these struggles to workplace or to the business places. All you need to do is to study and find out what is happening in their life and share empathy with them. Perhaps the person is undergoing an enormous you know, stress, carrying a lot of problems, maybe sickness in the family, or maybe the person is going through a divorce or some other kind of troubles, but it is important to find out and again look at people from, I mean, in their own perspective, not just from your own side of it. The fact is, 
we all are going through challenging time in our lives. Yes, I believe we know this. And you know, when our attitudes and behavior might be affected, and our current situation also might be affected because we are passing through this difficult time. So instead of judging your co-worker, try listening to them and practice empathy. By the time you do this, they will see that you love them and you will show them some concern and definitely they will return it with love. And number four is stand up for yourself. Well, no matter the situation, you should never be expected to accept poor, inexcusable behavior. Yes, you, you should be able to sometimes say, come on, this is out of it and I'm not going to tolerate it. Everyone is entitled to respect and you have the right to express yourself and your feeling. Calmly and acceptably talk to your, you know, to your colleague or to your friend or to your business partner and know, let them know how you feel. And you know, if this continues to happen and at the extreme point, then actions could be taken in the proper manner. But let this not be your first resolve. Let your first resolve be talking them into accepting and knowing what they are doing is wrong. And number five is focus on what you can control. You need to focus on what you can control because there are many things in life that we can control and many things we can. It's always best to focus on the things we can control. So this includes dealing with difficult people. For instance, I mean, if you have a co-worker that is not responsible to your calls or email, simply move on to find another co-worker who is willing to assist you with your project. You don't need to struggle with someone who is not going to support you or someone who is not useful to you. So walk around the difficult person and control the things you can. Focus on what you can control as you will waste all your time struggling and fighting. And number six, practice self-examination. You know, at some point you need to say, am I the problem or what am I doing wrong or what can I do rightly to avoid all these things. The ability to practice self-awareness is a top leadership skill in, your, in any career. So take a minute to examine your own strength and weakness as well as the demeanor towards others. And you ask yourself relevant questions. Are you aware of your emotions and how they affect you? Are you aware of how your behavior and power perceived by those around you? You have to ask yourself this. How do they perceive my behavior? And you need to ask yourself if there is something you could do that might be contributing to the problem. You also need to examine the way in which you are handling the issues so you can be sure you aren't adding fuel to the fire. By the time you ask yourself these questions and practice the self-examination, you are 58% on your way to solve these challenges. Number seven, treat the person with kindness and respect. I mean, mutual respect is very key in whatever you do, at workplaces, in a business place, wherever you are, mutual respect is important. So you need to treat with kindness and with respect, whether you're superior or whether you're subordinate, whatever it is. So you may have to, you know, you may have heard of the expression, kill them with kindness. And this can definitely be an effective tactic for dealing with difficult persons. By the time someone is difficult to you, and you're giving a lot of kindness, you kill him with kindness. I'll be like, come on. Why have I been doing all these things? And why to this guy? He's such a gentleman. And I, I mean, I should have stayed calm and respect myself. Okay, well, I'm going to make a change. There is no single person who appreciates, I mean, who appreciates being berated or treated like they are incompetent. And this includes difficult people. So whether he's incompetent or not, do not show it to his face. But think of how to help him, you know. And if you treat this person with just respect, in return, they will almost certainly make things worse for you. So you will be far more successful following the old mantra to treat others the way you want to be treated. If you do this, I'm sure I will tell you congratulations, you're going to get a good treatment back.
Always kill them with kindness. And number eight, don't take things personally. You know, this is the problem we have. We take things personally. And these guys may not be doing this to you just because it's you, but they may be doing it because it's their behavior. So we need to be careful how we take these things. If someone is repeatedly rude to us, we begin to feel like, oh, they just don't like us. But this is not the case sometimes. The fact is, however that person rude behavior might be originating from something else, it could be triggered by something that might have happened at home, what he has seen at, you know, on his way, or because of his salary, he's not happy with his salary, he became, you know, mad and he does whatever he wished to do, but not necessarily because it's you or me. We need to look at these things carefully. And if you don't take it personally, you can step back and really consider the best course of action. So this is very key. And number nine, you need to establish boundaries. I mean, dealing with a difficult person means you sometimes have to confront the person or establish a firm boundary. Yeah, you may have to say, come on, man, you've been doing this. I, I think um, let's our interaction be form formal. Let's have these boundaries, you know. <laughs> so sometimes this is um, <coughs> actually very necessary, you know. Why you should do so with respect, it is certainly acceptable to advocate for yourself, you know. So you, you sometimes have to let the person know how you expect to be treated and let them also know that you will not tolerate anything less and you set a boundary, you make it firm and if this does not happen, then action may be taken. Yes, at some point this could actually be the only way out. And number 10 and the last, talk with your boss. You know, if you have tried this other approaches and all else failed. You can always talk to your manager or your boss, whatever the situation is. You have to say, come on, I've done my best, I've invested a lot of effort, strategies, even things I hear from Finance Oracle, and it's not working. So I want you to set a clear definition of how we need to interact at workplaces with this young man. And be prepared to communicate clearly to your boss what is bothering you and why you find the behavior unacceptable. Don't go fighting. Just make a clear communication and in some cases, you might even provide a record of the person disrespecting behavior as an evidence to make it more clear and explicit what you've really passed through and this will clearly define things to your boss. And you explain how their behavior is impacting on you and your ability to do your job. This is very key because this is what we experience today at workplaces from different people, but not just because they hate us most times, most times it is because of the input in them, because you know, the reaction of people is like what they got, what is being put into them. So I want us to take these 10 points seriously, and I want us to practice it at workplaces because for you to work effectively and discharge your duty and be a good team member, you should have a good interaction. But then it becomes increasingly difficult because we have this kind of impulse at workplaces from certain people. But then, what is, what is going to be your, your decision? To quit? No, it shouldn't be. But to, to change this difficult person. This is what you should do and this gives you the ability to become a team player. So guys, I want to congratulate you if you have listened to, the, to this video from beginning to the end. I can tell you that if you practice this, you'll be able to handle difficult persons. Congratulations to you. Do not forget to share this. Share this in your work groups. Share this um, to your friends, to your relatives, in your family group, and ensure that other people gain this uh, the opportunity to listen to this. As people will quit their job, a lot of people have quit their job, good jobs, because they could not handle difficult person. A lot of people have also made a lot of mistakes and Finance Oracle wants us to correct these things. Congratulations. Have a good day.